This lecture is about designing register cells. First of all, we assume that a register consists of identical cells. So this is an important assumption that we make. We assume that all the cells of the register are the same as each other. They are identical. Then we can approach the register design by designing a representative cell for the register. So we design the core of the register indeed as a representative cell. And then we connect copies of the cell together to form the whole register. We just need then to apply the appropriate boundary conditions. We need to know how we connect the cells to each other and how we apply the boundary conditions to cells which need to be different than the others. So therefore, the first step in designing the register will be designing the register cell. Okay, so a single cell of the register needs to be designed at the first step. The specifications for register cell are given here. We will have a register. We need to know the data inputs to the register. We will have a, a set of control input combinations to the register, which could be in the form of encoded or not encoded way. As an example of not encoded, we can have uh, three control inputs such as loading, shifting and adding. So these are each one of these are, a, a, are is a signal, load, shift and add. And then since we have not encoded case, we, we assume that at most one of these three signals will be equal to one for any clock cycle. And you can see the possible combinations here. So all of them are equal to zero. The first one is one, the rest are zero. The second one is one and the rest are zero. And finally, the last one is one and the rest are zero. When the, the control signals, the control inputs are in the encoded form, then, uh, well, multiple of them could be equal to one at a given clock cycle. Here you can see an example. We have two control inputs, S1 and S0, and the possible combination of values for these two control inputs are given here, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So for each case, a specific operation could be performed, such as loading, shifting, adding, holding the current data, and so on and so forth. Then we need to have a set of register functions. What the register is going to do, what operations the register is going to perform. Here you can see examples. One example is loading. So just transferring the content of B into A. Shifting, shifting to the right the content of B and then transferring it into A. And then we have the addition and arithmetic operation here adding A to B and then loading the result into A. We also need to have a hold state specification. For example, when we have the control inputs load, shift and add three of them in not encoded form, then if all of them are equal to zero, so this combination zero, 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 means that we will hold the current value hold the current value and therefore loading will not happen. This is when we have the control inputs in not encoded form. If we have them in the encoded form, one of the cases, uh, one of the codes in it should be used in order to hold the state value. For example, when we had 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1 for S1 and S0, we can say that the first case here is for holding the current data. And the others, for each one of them, we will have a specific uh, operation performed. For example, this could be connected here 
This can be used for shifting and the last one could be used in order to perform the arithmetic operation of adding. Later on, we will see how we, we can design each one of these operations.